How are you now? It's the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast. My name is James Whelan. I am the Managing Director of Buckley Pierce Asset Management, general all-round good guy and wearer of hats, drinker of coffee. I am joined by Heath Moss of HLM Investments, our token South Australian. Heath, how are you now? Very well, thanks, mate. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to everyone else out there, depending on when you're uh, listening to us. Yeah, it's uh, currently the time is 1.34 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. It is the 26th of October, 2023 AD. Uh, na- oh, uh, uh, everything that you hear is general in nature, all the advice. I'm never- <laughs> <laughs> you didn't stuff it up. I was waiting for it. That was okay. Then- I, I, I'll, I'll give you that one. Seven and a half, difficult degree yeah, of execution. You, on no, no advice generals this time. Yeah, no advice generals. All generals are advice in nature. Uh, all exactly. microphones are not. Uh, it's, mate, um, oh, and the next big thing, the 28th of November, if you're an advisor, any of the advisors that listen to this thing, if you are an advisor, I am presenting at the Ensemble All Licenses PD conference. That is uh, is coming up th- this time next month. I've done a run-through of the presentation. I'm naming names. It's about the, the client trust proposal, when client trust has gone well, when client trust has gone badly. Who was responsible for what? Where were they? What were they wearing? What were they drinking? What were they smoking? I'm naming names. No one is is safe from what I'm going to be talking about. It's going to be absolutely scathing. No, it's 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 going to talk about real stuff that we've done. So please, if you have the chance to get along to it, go online. Um, e n s o m b l uh, ensemble. Register for the thing. It's uh, it's all good. If you want a free ticket, I'll probably be able to hand you a free ticket. But just be able to, you'll be able to get online and check it out anyway. Worst case scenario, just go and register and check it out, okay? An, e- an easy 10 got. CPD points for you for the year. Quarter of your CPD yeah, points. Get, get, pick, get up, pick, pick a quarter of your CPDs. I think I've got to, I've mm. got to do 50, actually, because I'm a responsible manager. But that's a whole different story. I'm also mm. I'm wearing a hat here, Heath. I, know, I don't want to make it yep. all about me, but it has been. This job, is, this job is satisfying. Heading up heading mm-hmm. up this thing is, is, is satisfying. Everything that I've done in my career has led to me doing this job now. Yep. It is. It is a massive gig. I, 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 even I sort of had underestimated just how colossal this thing actually was mm-hmm. um, that we're putting together mm-hmm. here. So it's it's pretty cool what we are doing. You're going to love when we when we launch it. You're going to absolutely love what it is that we're doing. Um, and then I and then and then I get to just have more of the work of sort of just telling people what it is that we've done, which is great. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. So we're going to start to see more and more of that as we go along. Look forward to it. It's uh, any chance we get to get differing views on on uh, markets and. You know, financials, etc., is is fantastic for for us and for the listeners out there. Who yeah. wants to listen to yeah, us? Absolutely, Bozo's gone forever. <laughs> how are you? Um, how are you? How are you faring over there in Adelaide, mate? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it's the the week started off warm and then it's got bitterly cold again with the sudden sudden ocean winds coming in and mm. yeah, we got uh, what are we? The second week of school, so coming back, so we're back into the grind of things. Nothing too exciting, mate. I mean, when you got three kids, one's under under a year old, or she turns a year next Friday. But uh, cool. when the, when you're in that situation, you know that dominates your life, and you know you, you get into a routine and uh, you you stick to it. Yeah, yeah, not so mm. bad at all. Okay, uh, footy tips will be at the end. We took a bit of a beating, I so much so that yeah. I actually received I actually received a pretty no, not stern, but it was a friendly friendly jibe saying, "Hey." Put your training wheels back on, pal. Um, and here's some tips. It was it was it was constructive criticism with the way that we've been tipping the football. But he said, you know what, I'm gonna have a go. Follow my tips, follow my tips this week. So he's put together a, a whole string for us, which is pretty cool. Um Beautiful. Thanks for much. so we'll get to get to the end on that one. Fantastic, fantastic. Should we get stuck into uh, it? Stuck into Mark? Yeah, mate, go, mate. You, yeah, go. Yep. With, um yep, yeah, 20 minute podcast, that's our new rule. Yep, beautiful. You push the buttons, you get the charts up. Uh, oh, that's right. On yeah, you start talking. And I'll, I'll talk about them. Oh, it hasn't been pretty for the markets. We all know that. Um, I think the SBX is down about a percent for the week, but it was down a couple of percent last week as well. Um, yeah. Earnings, we're in the middle of earnings season at the moment, which, you know, I, I saw Scuddy tweet the other day saying, you know, the risk of uh, earnings moving the markets has is, is uh, gone away. And that's probably true. All the big guys uh, we had Microsoft, Google, um, Facebook, etc. All, all report, and um, they all came through with glowing colours. And I'll, I'll cover them a little bit more in detail a little bit later. But um, it's it's all to do with those yields. Uh, we can see here we've uh, come down quite sharply there. And I'll bring up the long end of the yields. Where is it in my thing? There we go. 
So we 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 touched five, uh, just over five percent uh, earlier in the week, um, and uh, we came off. Uh, there was a bit of buying. Uh, a few people, obviously, five percent ten years risk free, pretty attractive. Um, and uh, since then, the yields have bounced again on the back of uh, probably you know some hawkish comments um, from from power, probably haw- more hawkish than we'd expected. Um, and uh, just generally, the, the liquidity in the market, of course, is playing a major factor with all these new T bills, or not T bills, new bonds issuance, etc. Um, and so, uh, and then just investors wanting a higher term premium for the, for their investment for, if, to invest in you know U.S. Treasuries bonds. Um, it's as simple yep. as that. Um, of course, yeah, it's a simple supply and demand a, issue on that. If, yeah, if just, if yeah. Like always, I, I, we're trying to tailor this podcast to everyone, but it's, it is a simple supply and demand. A whole bunch of new issuance coming on from mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Fed or Treasury or whoever. Yep, uh, Treasury. Yep. They, um, that that those are at a higher number. People, mm-hmm. are, it's it, you see the same thing, for example, going on in the hybrids market now. You get new hybrids that come out; they're at a higher number. People are going to dump the ones that they've got. Um, in order to go and get that, it's just that's yep. that just if you want to keep it simple, I know there's going to be a thousand things that make that sort of alter that sort of thing, but it's that simple supply and demand situation. Heath, and we sorry, don't we don't have um Japan or China buying US treasuries, they're actually net sellers of US treasuries, they're offloading, that's right. Yep, offloading. they're offloading. Um, and we've had again hotter and better economic data than expected last night. We had um services and manufacturing uh PMIs in the US, so they, they beat consensus and are above the 50 mark. Um, so showing expansion there. Uh, we also knew home sales beat. I mean, God, I, you know, mortgage rate. That I was, saw a chart the other day with a mortgage rate at eight point three percent. Like, who who the hell is fixing their mortgage rate for thirty years at eight point three percent? God knows. But I think uh, it, the, it's yeah. The, the the reasoning that was attached to the new home sales as well from just sort of thinking the eight thousand podcasts that I listened to in the morning that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was incentives that were being put on by builders to offload these things. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. I so think, I think actually, it's like I, I'm not sure if that's enough to be able to make that number up, but that's it's that sounds sounds healthy. It's actually probably a signal that the builders are maybe starting to struggle and new work coming in is uh, <laughs> is is a bit Off-loaded. scarce. When you start seeing yeah. incentives come in come in like that, um, and actually yeah. we're starting to see that in um, uh, new car sales here in Australia. As I've seen yeah. a few adverts advertising with you know two thousand dollars worth of extras, et cetera, et cetera. So you know when that stuff start, starts to come in, then sales are starting to falter. Um, so yeah, we've had uh, the yields go again. That's obviously pressuring markets. Um, oil, I mean, for all the talk and the blame that the Israel uh, crisis uh, has been given um, for for the uh, the action on the markets, um, oil couldn't really give a shit. Really, um, it uh, it did bounce up to over ninety. Actually, that's the US. I'll bring up Brent because Brent's more um, more relevant because it's seaborne. Yeah, we got, we got up to by Westie for that, didn't we? Yeah, we did <laughs> in ninety four. <laughs> Um, and and it's come right back down there to about 88 at the moment. It is off its lows, but I mean, mm. really, um, to me, uh, I don't think the markets really care about Israel. Um, I don't think economically it makes any sense. If they weren't going to care about Ukraine, Russia, which had much more impact, then uh, they won't care about this. Um, it's for me energy. There's an energy glut at the moment. We've seen gasoline uh, inventories rise and, and demand fall away there. Um, we've got a lot of gas in the system at the moment. The EU, obviously, their, their inventories are up at around 98%. The US is exporting more every day. Um, Australia is obviously as well. So, um, But, yeah, the, the whole the whole industry um, just seems to be a bit of a glut in energy at the moment, um, and that's suppressing I'm, energy prices, I think. Yeah, you go ahead. You I, go. Am, I am going to take sort of the other side of that equation for yep. you, and then I think that I think that um, – Energy is a great buy, but not that commodity. And I think that the best the best way of doing it, I, I still stand by the fact that although I don't do the, the, the day-to-day stuff anymore on this one, I still stand by the fact yep. that I think that the best leverage, not only to this, to be able to hedge your bets on this, is to buy the energy players. So, yep. for example, for example, that fuel ETF, which is run by yep. beta shares, which I used to be able to advise on until now they're a really big competitor at ours, <laughs> we'll get into that later, <laughs> but th- th- that fuel ETF that owns the energy providers under there, a not only are they printing money and, and actually selling this, so they'll be leveraged to the upside in fuel, but they're also making the acquisitions in the renewable space and also leading the way in the renewable space as well. And I think yep. that you want to have a big portion of your portfolio dedicated to renewables. And if you don't, then you're going to miss out. It's 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 like so, like imagine not having a small portion of your portfolio dedicated to copper. 
knowing what you know of the world and where things are going, you, you have yep. to have a small amount dedicated to that particular thing. Renewables yep. is the same. And I think that one of the easiest ways of playing it so that you can play that both way game of going, if, yep. if oil goes, if oil runs, I'm good. If these companies continue to do what they do, I'm good because they're still going to be paying at those dividends. And if they yep. move into renewables, which they are, and drive that, then I'm also good. So there's, there's, my, little, there's my little tip of the long-term investing of the week. And, That's your each way bet. And Chevron and ExxonMobil actually agree with you. I mean, Chevron just put a bid in for uh, $60 billion or $65 billion for um, Hess over in the US. Yep. And uh, ExxonMobil yep. a couple of weeks ago uh, put in a bid around $60 billion as well for Pioneer Natural Resources. So they think these energy companies are looking cheap. I mean, they know their own uh, business and sector as, as well as anyone. Um, you know, and even something like uh, here in Australia, Woodside, top 10 producer now. Um and with the Aussie dollar being so low, I would not be surprised if, you know, a major US company, although they may be a little bit tapped out, or someone like a Shell oh, here we go. came through and uh, yes. made, a, made a bid for Woodside. At, uh, you know, it would cost them around, I mean, the current market cap, caps around, say, 43, 44 US billion. So even at 55 US billion, 20% uh, markup, uh, you're getting them cheaper than what uh, Chevron and that paid for theirs, and uh, you're getting a lot more production. So... Um, I, I think uh, something like a Woodside would be in, in play at the moment, even though there may be a few hurdles with the FIRB. I actually can't see them blocking it here, um, at the moment either. So, Mate, that's um, good enough. I like that. Uh, mm, moving mm. Actually, if I may segue, are we good yeah, for a go segue? For yeah, go so for speaking it. Of, speaking of renewables, um, mm -hmm. China, that, that, that until a day and a half ago was like the most oversold um in a year the csi 300 yes. i've got a chart up here for our youtube uh, viewers as well the rsi this is from david inglis uh from bloomberg fantastic guy um the 14 day yep. rsi relative strength index was well and truly below the 30. as a general rule if you buy under 30 and sell above 70 you've got a pretty good chance of going okay or sell above 80. anyway whatever it is pick your number usually that sort of goes okay in a in a, in a, a ranging market um it should be okay Something like this yep. is just going out. Now, uh, China came out with their stimulus package yesterday. Yep. It was uh, China rolling out a stimulus package, a fresh stimulus package to support its economy in a fresh sign that the ruling Communist Party, are they in charge? Huh, is growing anxious at the sluggish performance over recent months. Uh, last night, the government confirmed that it would issue sovereign debt worth around 0.8% of GDP, wow, to support infrastructure investment in areas hit by natural disasters. That means that it, it that is actually and we, it has been confirmed um that it is more into the renewable side so yep. the stimulus will propel growth in sectors that the, the government favors such as advanced manufacturing and renewable energy while ensuring debt levels won't increase dramatically and that was a, a former uh, insider of that was zoo who i think used to be on the imf but also used to be pretty close to the relevant people that matter in that particular one i actually mm -hmm. didn't put his full name down and that's really rude on my part i'm sorry about that so that's that's renewable. That's that's saying that's actually that, that's China. This is China, actively and openly saying, we have had disaster, natural disasters strike. We are associating that that with with the stuff that we have done. These are the infrastructures that we would like to support as the CCP at a government level, at a state level. Renewables is one of those ones as well. If you think that that is a small sector that you shouldn't think about, then you are very much mistaken. Now over to you. Sorry, I, I took oh, that, too much. I was time. actually. Actually, listening to a, a very good podcast yesterday, um, Ford Guidance, if anyone uh, has heard of that one before, and they had one um, uh, focused on the Chinese economy and how it's structured and how it's different, et cetera, to um, our own and, and most Western countries. So it's worth a listen if you want to get into the weeds of the Chinese economy um, and, and have a listen to that. It's good Ford Guidance. Obviously, listen to this one first and then, then head on over. Yeah. To forward guidance, but yeah, um, I'll chat a little bit about uh, earnings because we've had some pretty important earnings this week. Um, I'll just bring up uh, the chart on Microsoft. See what I did there? Smooth uh, production. I got your chart back up when you were all ready to go, mate. Right? You're in tandem there. We're in tandem. I'm getting it. So I'm getting basically, it. what do you got here? Uh, that's Microsoft. Pretty top evening star formation. I'll be a short. Yeah. Well, look at the, the, the breakout at. <laughs> breakout there. The, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the open that I had yesterday on on the back of some very very strong earnings. They, they beat across every line. So um, oh, that's earnings. Microsoft. Sorry, yeah. Yep, okay. Microsoft. Yep. Two ninety nine versus. Yeah, I wasn't sure that. Yes. <laughs> Revenue came in much higher, plus thirteen percent. 
Um, cloud grew much faster than anyone expected at 29% growth versus 26% expected. Um, they just made a note that AI still isn't integrated into most of their products, but they're seeing a lot of demand and a lot of people asking for it, obviously. Um, they're expecting um, around 26 to 27% growth in cloud for their full year 24. Remember, this is their Q1. The Microsoft have a funny um, reporting uh, period. So this is their Q1. So for the rest of their financial year, expecting 26 to 27% growth. Um, and they yeah. now have 320 million users on Teams, which is uh, which surprised me a bit. That's, that's a huge Low. number of people using Teams these days. So that's become very well integrated into... Oh, come Every on. Remember that? I just, who was telling me about this yesterday that Zoom, no, remember that just, it all it all happened all at once. Almost every single company in the world during COVID were all on yep. Zoom. Zoom was good. Click, 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 meeting, meeting, meeting. And then all yep. of a sudden, just as one, one consciousness, we all just went, well, Teams is right here. We just, we're just going to use that. Exactly. And we just switched exactly. across into Teams. They just put, they put an add-on in Outlook that just made it very easy to use and it was yep. all there. And, 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 and that's, great, and we all went there. that's the beauty of Microsoft because we're already using Word, Excel, etc., Outlook. You know, it it's all it all comes together and makes things it makes life very easy most of the time. Well, it was as, phenomenal. As much as technology the, can, yeah. yeah um, the, so we're, the next chart. We're, so we're Microsoft. So we're. I'm going to give you a segue. I'm doing the just kidding. Okay, okay, dance, okay go for it. Where Microsoft's cloud seems to be in the sky, <laughs> it would seem that Google's cloud is not so much in the sky more like clouds yeah. in my coffee <laughs> we just lost half our uh, listening audience thank you um, for the six people yeah. who are still listening to us <laughs> yeah. the google the google sorry uh, actually, google. actually i watched um the internship the movie the internship the other night um with owen wilson That's and uh, the thing very very funny and uh, referring to everything as on the line and the google the facebook <laughs> is fantastic <laughs> Um, but yeah, we've seen Google the other go the other way. Um, they did beat on most lines, um, except their uh, cloud growth came in weaker than expected. Um, and they got smashed 10 percent, which I thought was extremely harsh given how, how good the rest of the the, the um the report was. Um, but yeah, down 10 percent last night on the back of that. Um, but advertisers are returning, um, YouTube saw um sorry google search saw double digit advertising growth for the first time since the first quarter of 2022 um and youtube saw growth as well but uh, obviously search makes up most of that um so yep. that's with the uh, the highlights for google and the last one i want to touch on in a similar vein um and i think these guys have surprised most um over their performance of the last 12 months is meta mm. and what a turnaround meta has had in the last 12 months of their business they smashed every line. They saw revenue growth of. Let me bring my notes up. Uh, they're not coming up. Where are they? Revenue growth of twenty three percent versus the same time last uh, last quarter. Um, operating margin at forty percent, so the best in two years. Um, mm. Again, advertising drove this. But here's a here's a really good stat for you. Reels, you know that new f function in in uh, Facebook and and all their products are uh, Reels. Well, that everything is I do is in Reels. Yeah, Reels is, is causing people to uh, spend 40 more percent time on Instagram than usual. So people are spending 40 percent more time on Reels, Instagram man. than they used to. Yeah. Yep. And so that's why Reels, the advertisers Reels. and that have come back. They've got more eyes on the screen um, watching these Reels, you know, watching you do your your, your thing on um, on there. And it's a, it's been a fantastic turnaround. Of course, their uh, VR meta stuff. They're still burning a hole in their pocket, um, still knowing they're profitable. And they said, don't expect it. Is looking, it does look better than it did when they first launched it, though. So, yeah, it, it did. It did. Um, I mean, that helps when you lay off 21,000 people, though, too. So, well, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, it was it's a great turnaround story, Meta, and uh, it's looking good. They their guidance for the Q4 was uh, 36 to 40 billion dollars in revenue, and the market had them only oh. at um, around 35, I think. So, um, and that's would... compared to 32 billion in the fourth quarter of last year. So, it's yeah, it's it's been phenomenal. You, you go. Sorry, uh, with the with the clock ticking, I wouldn't touch them with the barge pole. The massive legal issues on the downside, being sued left, right, and centre for everything that they've got going on. Way too much legality, sovereignty risk, or whatever it is for people who just want to. They're they're, they're perennial kicking boy for everything. 
Now, NFL tips, you're up first. We both lost last week by a lot. What yeah, have you terrible. Got? Mine was terrible. Uh, I've gone a safe bet this week. I've gone the Eagles at the line at negative six and a half versus the Commanders for $1.86. I think you can safely put that one in your back pocket. Put the Eagles. So you've, you're back in the Eagles now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got celebrity, celebrity tips here coming in from Dank Trader 4000 um, long time listener of the show. He actually starts off by saying, Don't listen to Pete from Brisbane on the financial insights. They are brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. However, your NFL, your NFL team suck. Your NFL tips suck. Thank you very much. Well, more or less. I'm paraphrasing. Now, a few mm-hmm. potential cheeky ones. So I've got one here. All underdogs in order of likelihood. I'll go the first. I'll go. Uh, you know what? I'll go the first one. You get one chance at it. This is like someone's. It's some some punter on the phone is calling the fund manager and he's got an idea. You get one idea, it better be good. Here we go. He's got Minnesota. Oh, the bikes. Uh, he's got Minnesota plus three at Green Bay. Man, that's good. Green Bay's offense are in a slump, figuring out rhythm somehow. The Vikes, Vikings beat are my 49ers. underdogs going in despite Kirk heating up and the defense bailing. Um, mm-hmm. His second bet is also he's got Cincinnati plus one at San Fran. That's all we got. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all for the show, mate. If you got anything to add, uh, no. Oh, except lithium's still hot. We got uh, we got what's his, uh, SQM coming in with a uh, one point six billion dollar bid for uh, Azure Minerals here on the ASX. If you'd held that one twelve months ago and still hold it today, you've made one thousand four hundred and thirty percent return. Not Shame. bad for uh, those and baggies. S- and I saw um, what's his name? I know I actually know who this guy is. He's got a no, no, no. no. It's um, talking about P P. L, uh, wait, no, it was talking about, he, he was noticing that UBS is a, a, a buyer, a strategic buyer for AZS. Um, UBS is a strategic buyer at AZS. He, he reckons it's, um, they're buying for, uh, what's the face? Gina. Creasy. Um, on that one. AZS. So he's, he's pretty happy there on that one. Um, the other one that I was going to say, yes, RBA are going to hike on Melbourne Cup. Uh, I called this on, I sent it to clients on Monday. It hit LinkedIn on Tuesday. It went on, out onto um, Stockhead on Wednesday. And as all of the banks have now um, come full circle and they think that there's a, a hike on it, it, it went to 80%. Michelle talked it down in the morning this morning and it's now at about 55% chance of a hike. I am. I reckon she's going to do it. It's going to be up. She, it, she's got seven years to redeem herself after this. Um, this is just one hard one. We're not mucking around. We actually think that there's a reason to hike. I'm going to do it. We're not. We're not fooling. It's her chance to say we're not fooling around. I think. Uh, I actually think the opposite. I think she'll hold. I think. Uh, Put a beer on it, then, my hike, friend. Like uh, she would have uh, said more this morning. Said she seems like she was talking it down. I think yields are doing their job for her. Four point eight percent here in Australia on ten year with a cash rate at four point one. They don't need to do anything. Right. So. Uh, Okay. Yeah, hold for me. Okay. I think it's it's more just about I'm playing the, the man, not the ball on this one. Um, I think it's Fair just enough. more about that sentiment of who, you, of who you're dealing with. Right, we're past our time limit. Thanks, everyone, for listening to us. Uh, tune in later. Send more questions. Send more footy tips. Thanks, everything. Uh, g'day, Pete from Brisbane. I hope you're listening. Have a good one. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye. See ya.